All right. This is a um, story that happened that was very supernatural in, in its leading. My wife and I were visiting up in Northern California with some friends that we had led to the Lord. Oftentimes we would take a break and go up to Northern California where we had a lot of Christian friends because that's where we first started into the ministry was Northern California. So we got together with a couple of friends and we uh, decided to go to the coast. They lived in Palo Alto. So my wife was uh, visiting her sister and another girlfriend and I took a long walk down the beach of, on one of those beautiful Northern California coastline beaches with a, a lot of uh, driftwood and fog. It was in the middle of the winter time. So fog was coming in on the beach. But you can see down the beach probably about a mile. And so I had walked pretty far down and I found a very large cave. And I, I went inside the cave and I, I was um, I'm pretty amazed to see the, the ceiling structure of the cave inside. So um, it was like being in this room. It was a big cave. I never saw a cave that big in, on a Northern California beach. So I walked, went into the cave and I, I said to myself, being a good glossolalia Pentecostal, that the, the echo to worship God was perfect. So I started to sing in tongues. Then, while I was worshiping the Lord, the Lord said to me, there are some five people coming down the beach right now, and I want you to tell them about me. And I remember how so real that voice was to me. I remember how the sweetness of his voice filled the air because I was worshiping in the spirit and lifting up my hands in my priesthood and then the Lord met me there in worship with divine guidance. It seemed as if everything was perfectly arranged because I walked outside of the cave and there were five guys coming down the beach just like you told me in the spirit. I walked up to them in all the confidence that somebody just heard from God. And so um, I told them, excuse me, but I'm a minister and would you please give me a few minutes of your time and I can explain to you about some things that I feel like I must tell you. So please listen. Four, listen, the fifth one didn't. But those four guys listened to everything, which uh, as I proceeded, I drew the four spiritual laws from uh, Campus Crusade for Christ, Bill Bright invented them. And so I had memorized the four spiritual laws. And I drew circles in the sand and reproduced the four spiritual laws. Did you know that God loves you and has a wonderful plan for your life? And I drew diagrams of Christ being invited into the life and e uh, dethroning the ego. And so uh, then I, I would throw in a little bit of testimony about myself. And, and I, I didn't tell them anything except just keep on telling them about Christ and witnessing for the Lord. And that kept me going for probably about an hour. And so my mom, my mom, Freudian slip, my friends were down the beach and I was keeping company. I always kept company when the Holy, waiting, when the Holy Spirit was using me because I would forget about everything that was going on around me. These guys 
said yes. And there's a there's a question at the end of the, that track. Is there any good reason why you wouldn't want to accept Christ right now? And so the four of them said, uh, yes, we would like to accept Christ. So thank you, Bonnie, for sharing your heart with us. And four of the men pray to make a decision, decision to accept Jesus in their heart. Then, of course, I had to baptize him because I was never going to see him again. And so uh, we stripped down into our underwear on that Northern California beach. In the middle of winter time, I was weighing 115 pounds. And I baptized four of them in the uh, winter surf of that Northern California beach. And I was elated. I was warm. Although the water was uh, stinging cold, I was warm. He kept me warm as if I had a wetsuit on. The, the waves were quite large, so all I had to do was hold the nose, and as the wave came crashing over the uh, candidate, the Lord did it. I, didn't, I would ha have to line them up quickly to a wave, and then a wave would come over and baptize. It was a special time. We said goodbye embraced but the most important part of the story was not only was the fifth person in rebellion against authority he was in rebellion against God and his parents intelligent young man I mean you know all of the people up by Stanford they have a certain kind of a sophistication in Palo Alto area so I, I didn't include that part of the glorious testimony of the four men getting saved, but this man, let's call him Roger, violently and with a lot of anger said he didn't believe in God. And then the more that I started to talk, he would argue, but I had no argument for him because you see the scriptures say that we should avoid arguments or quarrels. And so I, I kept on leading it right back to witnessing for Christ and being kind. And he started to be loud and obnoxious. And he looked like he was going to pretty much get violent because he started throwing things and lifting up his voice. And, you know, uh, having a volatile step on it, I know where the combustion comes. Now, all of the signs of violence, you yeah. I said, um, be quiet. <laughs> and then he was. And the Spirit of God gave me power. Whatever violence was rising up demonically in that guy, because he was getting louder, he was throwing things, he was screaming at me, and then I told him, goodbye, I'm sorry, you know, that it didn't work out, and it did with your friends, because I'm absolutely delighted that your friends got saved. Then I was back with my company, and this man, Roger, came running up to us on the beach. And that's when he had a struck look on his face. Very powerful, struck look. Then I was back with my company, and this man, Roger, came running up to us on the beach. And that's when he had a struck look on his face. A very powerful, struck look. never forget it. As he was walking down the beach, out towards the water, 
an audible voice came out of heaven and said to him, listen to my servant. The Lord told me to share this story today. I haven't thought about it in years. But anyway, the Lord said, listen to my servant. And he said, I got so shocked that God spoke to me that I said, I, I didn't listen to anything you said at all. And the tears were streaming down his face. And he says, I, I didn't listen to anything that you were saying. I didn't hear one word. He says, you must tell me everything that you said before. <laughs> and he, he just, he was completely broken. He said he was a communist atheist. You know, I mean, in the argument, he was coming out with really existentialism and, and he was an atheist and a communist. And, you know, I mean, I've gone, really? Where did you learn about all of that stuff? How interesting. I never knew the communists. But anyway, um, I let him go because he, he was fighting so hard, the witness of Christ. So I, I bound him and I ignored him and I kept my eye contact on those four men and brought him in. And Jesus said, this is a perfect scripture for it. If you follow me, then I will make you fishes. Not only was the sweetness of the Holy Spirit in the keg, but he told me specific numbers, which ended up being exactly true. When I went outside of the cave, I was able to take four and lead to Christ. God spoke to Roger in an audible voice from the sky, and we, and so, uh, along with my company, who were all believers, we graciously shared about Jesus. Um, and there were women there, you know, and it was on this setting, and we had a fire going. And we were all sitting around the fire, and I began to explain to him how God had a plan for him if he would only yield to the, the Lordship of Jesus Christ and the Kingdom of God. And he, uh, Pray. <laughs> and then, by the way, I, I have to tell you, then uh, I stripped down into my wet underwear and baptized him in, in the ocean. And then the Lord baptized him with the Holy Spirit. So he got saved, baptized in water, and baptized with the Holy Spirit all at the same time. And so um, he was converted. He said, you cannot leave me here. Well, he didn't know that we had uh, the Philadelphia house. He didn't know that we had Mansion of Messiah, House of Miracles in Santa Ana, uh, Blue Top Motel in Newport Beach. And so um, I said, I'm going to challenge you. He said, he said, in what way? I said, I feel like this is such a typical New Testament setting with Jesus to be by the water and, and to be by an uh, open beach with people that are converted and, 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 and the Lord blessed this time. I, I said, I feel that the Lord would say unto you, follow me. And I said, so that the only thing that, that I can respond to that is, is, is that we absolutely love you. We're 100% for your success in Christianity because of the way that God chose to bring you in. Because it's very powerful. I, I, I don't know of uh, too many people that have heard an audible voice. I had never heard up until that time an audible voice speak to me. Uh, so uh, I said, I'm going to challenge you. You you drop your nets and you follow the Lord. And so you come with me. And I took him. And, well, he went home. He told his parents that he had converted to Christianity. I gave him these conditions. If you come right now, if you fly back with me, 
to Southern California right now, the Lord will e even more change your life because we believe that community for people that had dysfunctioning families ended up being a school for scripture. So in the houses, the people had Bible studies regularly, they ate their meals together, they had a wonderful family, and there were uh, uh, always about 20 or 25 people in the house, or 30. Uh, when we first went and started to evangelize, uh, we led 30 converts to Christ that week, and we moved them all into our house. And I was married, and there was another married elder couple in the house. And everybody that accepted Christ moved in. <laughs> and uh, at that time, there were literally thousands of people assembling around the ministry at Calvary Chapel. And it just so happened that that night was my night. And um, he didn't know that, uh, that I was a church minister. He thought that perhaps I might have been just like a, a little bit of a confused hippie that, you know, that took too much acid in the 60s. But um, we flew down on Air California and uh, we were given a ride. Uh, I, I think my car was parked at the airport and we drove to Calvary Chapel, which was in the absolute peak of that sizzle revival that we were in. It was just crescendo in the, in the spirit. And uh, I walked out on the platform uh, and shared Roger's amazing story, conversion, how he had been converted on the beach hearing the audible voice. And, uh, and he, he was filled with the Holy Spirit when he was standing in front of the people. There was not one atom of his body that wasn't being touched by the super natural power, resurrection power of Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit. And he gave his testimony and talked about his life change and moved him to one of our houses and started into Bible study and studied the Bible for at least a couple of years in our fellowship and lived in several of the different Christian houses. He went and told his parents, he drew all of his money out of his bank. He dropped everything that he knew in his world in life because he heard that voice say, listen to my servant. 